Right. I've, I've got to ask somebody at Zoom how you know when you're actually live, because it says live, right. but then you never know. It's a little... All oh, right, I, there we go. Hey, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of Chef AJ Live, known as Tuesday with Thomas, because we do this the first Tuesday of every month with Thomas, who is the founder of California Balsamic Vinegars, and this is where he creates recipes that were submitted by you guys, the viewers, with the flavor of the month. And the flavor of the month of November is the pumpkin pie spice, and he's going to be making a delicious soup and another casserole, all fall recipes. It'll be perfect for Thanksgiving. And I have something really exciting to tell you about what me and Thomas are doing together on Sunday night after we get into the show. Please welcome back Thomas Allen from California Balsamic. Hi, Thomas. Good afternoon, Chef. A very exciting Sunday night this week. I'm going to be nervous as can be, but still, it's going to be a lot of fun because. Well, you guys have to find out later. Chef's going to tell you all about it. But uh, this afternoon... Why don't we, let's tell him now. Let's tell him now. All right, I'll, 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 wait. I'll tell him several times. Thomas is making his debut in stand-up comedy in a show that Charles and I are in. And you can get tickets. And I'm posting a link right here. It's virtual. And there's no two-drink minimum. <laughs> For a change. Huh? So I've got it. A nice little routine that Chef AJ, I have to thank you for giving some of the material that's in that. And the instructor, Carrie, has uh, really helped out because he's a professional uh, comedian and a writer as well. has been on lots of television shows and he wrote most of my uh, most of my material with a little bit of yours in there as well. So thank you both to that. So well, uh, you're going to be great. So good. I feel better. I feel much more comfortable in here making some soup and casserole and, and pumpkin spice bites on there than I am thinking about being a professional comedian. So uh, that's, that's what we're going to do here today. So um, I hope everyone out, went out and voted today. We sent in our ballots last week, and that's very exciting. So when we're going to be uh, doing this for uh, our, our first recipe tonight is autumn butternut squash soup. And uh, who, uh, who gave us this exciting recipe? Rita. Oh, Rita. So uh, Rita, who's given us lots of recipes. Um, we'll be doing one of Rita's recipes every month because that is something that she said she wanted to do was give us one recipe every month. Now, we're going to start off with our Instapot. We took about a two pound butternut squash and we cut off the stem. Now, we took all the seeds out. Uh, we left the skin on and we cut it up into nice chunks. Pop that into the Instapot along with six cups of water, one onion cut up into some chunks, a large clove of garlic, half a cup of celery, half a cup of carrots, four pitted dates, a tablespoon of our ruby red onion balsamic, and a tablespoon, of course, of our premier flavor, the pumpkin spice balsamic. We put a teaspoon of the Persian lime pepper from our friend Nick at Local Spicery, as well as a half a teaspoon of his smoked paprika. And uh, pop it into the Instapot, 40 minutes. Now we think we did it on high, I'm pretty sure we did. It was a manual release. And then finally, um, after it was all done, we took an immersion blender and gave it a nice buzz all the way around for a minute and got it beautifully creamy. And now uh, Rita said that if you don't have uh, a, an immersion blender, then simply let it cool down, pop it into your Vitamix and blend it up there and that worked out beautifully. Now we made this soup uh, oh, and zap that all in there. And ladies and gentlemen, there is what our soup looks like right here. And I have to tell you that for lunch today, I had a bowl of this soup and I put about, oh, uh, about a quarter cup of, of uh, steamed rice I put in there as well. And, and then just for giggles, I popped in about a half a teaspoon of sweet heat balsamic in there as well. And that was fantastic. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And Ethel's gonna have that for dinner tonight. 
So that was a lot of fun. Uh, and you can garnish uh, the top of it with a little bit more pumpkin spice um, the seasoning or a little bit of the of the apple, the pumpkin pie balsamic in there as well. And that's just an option to do. This is an absolute delicious soup. Can't recommend it enough. So consider that for the <coughs> holiday because it's definitely butternut squash season right now. So that is our first. And one of the nice things about this soup is that it is sodium free. So many times when you get prepared butternut squash, it's just loaded with sodium. So this was absolutely fantastic. Good. So that was our first easy recipe for, for that one. Okay. okay, now, second recipe, and Chef, shout out if you've got any questions at any time, we're always happy to answer any questions. Um, I'm sure our friend Diane is watching right now. Hey, Diane. Let's see. The second one, we did a, a casserole with sweet potatoes. Um, this is something that Ethel has been making for Christmas dinner for years and years for her family. And so we just modified it a little bit more to make it SOS free. And um, so we started off with uh, preheating the oven to 350. Oh, and I wanted to say, all of the recipes are on our website as we speak. So after the program, you can go check out the uh, recipes and, uh, and go from there. Um, the sweet potato casserole, uh, two pounds of sweet potato. Now, Chef, what's your sweet potato choice? Oh, the Hannah yam is my favorite for sure. Okay, so if you can get Hanny yams, uh, I, are the hand yams, they're different from the Japanese sweet potato. Right? They're a little bit less sweet, but I also find them to be a little bit creamier. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so whatever sweet potato that you have available uh, in your local stores. So we took the two pounds of sweet potatoes, peeled them, cut them in, we cut them up into about one half to three quarter inch cubes. We made this two nights ago with larger cubes and uh, we found that we made it again last night the smaller cubes cooked more evenly and we like those better. So in a bowl, pop all the chopped up uh, sweet potato chunks and then adding into the bowl a half a cup, oh, sorry, a quarter cup of date syrup and two tablespoons of our pumpkin spice balsamic. One quarter cup of chopped pecans and of course you can use any nut you want and then mix all that up into your bowl to completely coat all your chunks of sweet potato. Transfer that into a casserole dish. Our casserole dish, uh, we measured that one up there, it was still a bit warm, uh, 10, 10 by seven. So this was a 10 by seven and it's not very deep. Now this is not gonna make a huge amount, but we found this cooked really, really well in this size but be sure to cover it with foil because you wanna lock in all, all the, uh, the moisture to that. The first time we made that, the, we uncovered it to try and caramelize the potatoes and all it did was dry them out. So I don't recommend. Put that into the oven for about an hour and 15 minutes and open it up, be real careful with all that steam coming out and uh, stir it up. It should be wonderfully moist and loads of flavor. Um, and just pop that right into a serving plate here. We warmed this one up uh, just a little while ago and it's still just glistening here and it smells fantastic. So, and it's still wonderfully moist. So that makes a big, big difference. Keep it covered with foil. And that is a super easy recipe for sweet potatoes for the holiday. Your family will like it or else. Wow, it's amazing. So, easy squeezy. Now, as we all know that um, every show out there, we do a little flashback uh, of, um, of the history and my history. And we left last time uh, from the doing Up With People. There'll be no singing today, I'm sorry, Chef. And um, right after Up With People finished, we had, uh, we had the chance to go to, uh, I came back from Up With People 
And I met one of my high school classmates, Donna Watton, and she said she was just leaving her job and would I consider taking her place? And of course I asked her, what, are you, what were you doing? And she said she was working with the Eastern Onion Singing Telegram Company. And I thought, oh, that's right up my alley. That would be easy. And so I went in, auditioned, got the job on the spot. And for two years, I traveled all over the suburbs of Detroit doing singing telegrams. I did over a thousand telegrams, uh, primarily on weekends. And uh, I would go to uh, birthday parties, anniversaries, uh, going to weddings. Um, we would uh, sing all these different songs and different costumes. And uh, most of the time they were absolutely fantastic. People love to have a live entertainer come into their home or office or most fun were bars because people were a little bit drunk and they just whooped and hip, hooped and hollered. This is uh, a photograph of one of the outfits that I would wear uh, for the for it. And that's when I was, oh, probably 24, 25 years old, uh, back in the good old days. Oh my and God, you look like the, the ringmaster of the circus. That is exactly <laughs> what it felt like. This outfit was not my favorite. I actually had a uh, white top hat and tails uh, outfit for a tuxedo called Mr. Wonderful. And that was um, the outfit that I wore more than anything else. I cringe when I remember going and doing a, a seven foot tall pink gorilla. That was beyond horrible. And I only did that two or three times and said, I am not doing that anymore. But um, we would go to uh, different, um, we would go to uh, one of the songs was a song for I'm Sorry for Lovers. And some guy had gotten into a big fight with his girlfriend. He sent me to her house to sing a song for her. She opened the door. I said, hi, I'm with Eastern and Singing Telegrams. And I've got a song for you. And uh, this is from, you know, your boyfriend, Jimmy. And with that, she slammed the door in my face and I said, thanks very much <laughs> and, and simply walked away from that one. Um, a, uh, a police officer pulled me over more than likely because I was speeding on my way to a telegram and uh, the officer said, singing telegrams, were you over at the Jones family house last month doing a, a telegram for a birthday party, which of course I was not. And I said, well, sure, I was there. That was me. He said, well, that was the funniest routine I'd heard in many, many years. And he asked me where I was going. And he said, I know exactly where you're going. And he gave me a police escort to my next uh, event that I was supposed to uh, sing at. And uh, I still can't believe that I talked my way out of, uh, out of a speeding ticket, you know, by... Uh, you know, by my singing telegrams. And so now you, those now you, can, you can talk your way out of tickets now by just giving them some vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe me, I've tried. Although I'm happy to say in all my half a million miles that I've driven to all the festivals out there, I have never had any moving violation. I've never, I haven't had a ticket in- Oh, knock on wood. Years. We're knocking on here. Thank you very much. But- uh, Having a van full of, you know, 2,000 pounds or more of cases and tables and whatnot, I'm scared to death about driving, you know, with my van so heavy and how long it takes to stop when you're going 65, 70 miles an hour on the freeway. So I've always been extremely cautious uh, when I'm driving to all of these events. So that would be uh, some major cleanup, wouldn't it? Oh, and believe me, we've had cases fall over in the van, and you can always tell because of the smell of balsamic vinegar, or especially one of our oils that we do sell, of white truffle oil, stinks to high heaven. And whenever you can yeah. smell it, you know that you've got a problem in the back of the van, and it's time for a major cleanup. 
So we always try to, uh, you know, pack the van as carefully as we can so that we don't have cases falling over and broken bottles. Well, Susan oh. says, we love your balsamics. Our new delivery arrived today. Oh, thank you, Susan. That's very sweet. Um, we are, uh, most people, you know, didn't know that we had, we had the pumpkin spice balsamic. So we've had several people, a young lady said that she was uh, sending us a couple of recipes with the pumpkin spice and we'll get them on Thursday. So we'll be putting those on our website on Thursday when we get them. So there'll be more and more uh, recipes. Please send us any recipe that you have for our product and we will put your recipes on our website with your name on it and you'll be famous. Well, I wrote a whole book where I put exclusively California balsamic in the ingredients. Because <laughs> you're a very bright young woman. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Ethel just reminded me. We had our uh, brand new website, you know, from a couple months ago. And Patrick, our tech guy, said that all of our comments that people had given each individual flavor were all wiped out. So now our brand new website um, has very few comments for the, you know, Seven Herb Italian, Sweet Heat, Gilroy Garlic, any flavor that you write, uh, that you enjoy, please write a review on it because we just need more reviews now. We had a couple of thousand and now we don't have more than 20 or 30 on the entire site. So we have to start building that up again. So if you did it once before, please do it again. And that will help people to have a good an idea of uh, what they like, what, what they like to use it for. So that would be a big help. So thank you in advance to all that. Uh, so, so where do they put the reviews? Gluten-Free Diva asks. Um, right below each picture. Uh, so you click on say sweet heat and as if you were going to purchase some, Right below the picture, you'll see uh, a little little spot that says review. Just click on that and write a little review of a couple of sentences and what you think about it. So you do that with any flavor. Uh, every one of the flavors has a little review box right underneath it when you click on that actual picture. Okay? I didn't know. Now you know. All right. So. And uh, our last uh, recipe here is called uh, pumpkin spice bites. And, um, and this is a fun one. We made this the other day and took them to work and the people at, uh, at, at the warehouse really enjoyed these. So, so we start off with, in a food processor, or first we preheat the oven to 350. In the food processor, pulse one cup of rolled oats until it's a coarse like flour texture and set that aside. And then soak 10 pitted dates in a half a cup of plant-based milk of your choice, set that aside and let them soak for a little while. It doesn't have to do that more than we did only for about 10, 15 minutes. And then in the food processor, a very ripe banana, the mushier the better, a tablespoon of vanilla, two tablespoons of pumpkin spice balsamic, two teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of Nick's local spicery pumpkin pie spice, three quarters cup of organic pumpkin. Please don't use pumpkin pie mix, just use the straight pumpkin SOS free in a can. Now add the date milk mixture into the food processor and then add the oat flour that you just made. Pulse that until it's thoroughly blended. Now, the first time we did it, we just clicked it on and the entire mixture jumped up into the top of the food processor. And I had to turn off and scrape down the top of the lid because it was a quarter inch thick of pumpkin mash all over there. So be aware of that. And uh, pour that mixture into a bowl and fold into that mixture one and a half cups of rolled oats. And we had a cup of finely chopped walnuts. We kept a, about a, just a couple of tablespoons of the finely cut chopped walnuts off to the side to use as a sprinkling over the top of them. But the walnuts goes in 
mix it all together, and then you just drop those um, uh, little bits of the pumpkin spice batter. And oh, here we are. We used uh, a little. Now we were told that if you had a a uh, silicone, uh, the silicone uh, little muffin tin, that would be best. This was a non-stick one here. These work beautifully. They just popped right out. And it made up, now, 20 to 25 minutes of baking time. We found 20 minutes was more than enough because they're relatively small. And here's what uh, these little bites are. And these are tasty little buggers. And, and of course, you could drizzle over the, uh, sprinkle the, the little bit of uh, leftover uh, Walnut. Walnut chopped up uh, over the tops of these. And what a great little snack. You can make a whole several dozen of these and just munch on them when you got something, when you get, I don't want to say when you have the munchies out there, when you just need a little bite, uh, that's an easy thing to do. And uh, those are three simple, easy recipes. Just talk about the date, mm -hmm. the banana. So. So we also did a, um, where we took the banana, the nice cream, and we substituted dates for the figs. And then we also added pumpkin spice instead of the fig balsamic. And that actually tasted quite delicious also. For a little nice cream with, yeah, frozen bananas and dates and, uh, pumpkin. and pumpkin balsamic and blended. Oh, super easy. You guys have made that a hundred times. And this is just a little extra twist with the pumpkin spice balsamic. So that's an easy uh, suggestion as well. That's amazing. These recipes look so good. And I'm seeing them on, I went to your website and I'm seeing them there. Yep, so it, th these are so easy to do and we'll, uh, we'll tell you what next month's uh, flavor is gonna be. And chef, I need your help to uh, decide which, um, what flavor we're going to do. Well, let's so, see if it's December. What, what, uh, do you have a gingerbread? Uh, oh. Let's see. What is December? Eggnog, gingerbread. What do you guys think of when you think of December, Christmas? A cranberry. Do you have a cranberry? We do not. Okay. Well, that's a good idea. Uh, uh, maybe an orange. I'm trying to think of flavors that, you know, Christmas. Hanukkah. The closest we have would be our chocolate orange for a holiday. Um, oh. So that's a possibility. Yeah, that could work. But we do. All right. We will do that. We'll yeah. do our chocolate orange All right. for next month. So Yeah, because then people will be look, looking for maybe desserts, healthier desserts for the holidays. Somebody's sure. suggesting peppermint, but I don't think you have a mint yet. We do not. Although yeah. that's something that if we're going to do a mint, we want to do a fresh mint. You know, we don't want to do an artificial flavoring for that because you can buy fresh mint, you know, and do that. But not exactly sure. Uh, to do it mint by itself, but we want to do a, a, a blend of that. So that's something, something down the road. Jill says Mexican. Do you have a Mexican vinegar, Mexican flavored vinegar? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a Mexican one per se, although I was looking at Nick's flavors and I think that he does have something in that style. I have to find out exactly what it is. Um, and I, I get a sample of it and make a, make an experimental a uh, little couple little bottles of that. So and we're going to make a Persian lime sample for the chef. Yeah. And uh, chef, do you use Nick's Persian lime uh, spice? I haven't had it, but I, that does sound delicious. So now he makes a Persian lime pepper is what he makes right now. But what we want to try to get from him, he's bringing in uh, from somewhere near Saudi Arabia, uh, some of the Persian lime spice without the pepper. And that's what I'm interested in. So we're going to uh, look at that and see if we can turn that into a nice balsamic. Uh, Persian lime sounds absolutely fascinating. So that's something that we'll be thinking about sometime next year. But, um, you know, we're always looking for new suggestions, um, but it's got to be an ingredient that we can get, you know, in Ukiah. Ukiah is not the world's greatest, you know, uh, city for getting supplies. Just like Indio, that's a tough thing, you know, to find the ingredients where you are. Yep. Hey, so, you, know what, you know what flavor I always thought would be interesting, but I've never tried is a kiwi flavor vinegar. Kiwi? Hmm. Now that is possible. Yeah, kiwi, or maybe kiwi lime because I just I love green. I love things that are green. 
So that's something that we could uh, do because you could just do, if, if we have access to fresh kiwis, slice them up, chop them up, put them in the food processor and turn it into a puree and dump it into the white balsamic. That would be fantastic. With a little bit of mixed Persian lime spice, that could work beautifully. So another new flavor. In Joe Venezuela. wants you to ask how many people like ginger. Oh. <laughs> He makes it for me. Uh, how many people like ginger? Now, I have to say the SOS Free community loves ginger and use it all the time. And we are going to come out with a ginger balsamic uh, in January. So uh, you can, if anybody wants to ask for a sample of the ginger balsamic, ask for it. We just made a couple of buckets of ginger balsamic by accident. <laughs> we thought it was curry powder and it was ginger powder. <laughs> so, oh my God. Yeah. So, well, um, but there is ginger in the teriyaki, isn't there? Of yes. course, of course there is. So yeah. but we have people requesting straight ginger balsamic in, and the, white so, vinegar. in the white balsamic and uh, we've made it. And, um, and if anybody wants to try a sample of it, um, in the order notes box at the bottom of the checkout page is where you put your requests for two free samples with every order. I saw something on your Instagram, like something I'd never seen. Do you have some new sauce or something you've been hiding from me? New sauce. I don't know. I actually, I don't go to our Instagram. My niece, Kaylani has been uh, putting all of the, everything in the Instagram has been put on by my niece, Kaylani. Okay, so let me see if I can find know. it. People are asking if you yeah. have a pomegranate or, a, or a, a sesame ginger. Not yet. Um, to find a sesame flavor, we used to use sesame oil, but it was just too strong and it didn't last long. And so we stopped doing that, nor will we ever use sesame oil again. What about so, sesame seeds? There's something called dipping vinaigrette. I've never seen that on your Instagram page. Oh. Well, that's a that's a, obviously an oil and vinegar. Oh, that's, the, that's why. Okay, so that's why I never heard of it. Okay. Right. I, and I and for all of you, when you're going out anywhere, this is a common mistake that people will make if they don't use uh, vinegar a lot, is the difference between vinegar and vinaigrette is a vinaigrette is oil and balsamic or oil and vinegar mixed together. So um, be careful about that. Uh, if you're going to a restaurant or someplace that has a vinaigrette, that's oil and vinegar. So beware. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, people are asking if you can make a cinnamon balsamic. No, that's a good idea. And we've been selling cinnamon for near 20 years and that we haven't done that yet is shocking to me that we won't. So we will experiment with that I'm probably tomorrow and you make know, up a small little test bottle to see if good. We use a, a really high quality Vietnamese cinnamon that has 5% <laughs> um, oil content. Now, oil content is crucial in cinnamon because we all grew up with the Schilling and the McCormick cinnamon, which is 2% oil content. And uh, the Vietnamese cinnamon is 5% oil content. So it's two and a half times stronger flavor. Uh, so it's really good quality. If you ever find Vietnamese cinnamon, that's a good one. Well, you know, I've, I've had other companies do cinnamon pear. Those go really well together. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon pear. So we will we'll make it. Now, cinnamon's kind of tricky because it's super fine. And if you just put cinnamon into a thick balsamic, it turns into these little balls and it doesn't emulsify, it doesn't blend properly. So you have to have a really strong machine that will blend it completely so that you don't have all these little cinnamon balls because that, that's just needs to be completely thoroughly blended. So we have, I'm happy to say, a really strong blender that it was designed for xanthan gum and that's a super fine powder. So the cinnamon is very similar to it. So we'll, we'll blend that together in there and see what happens. And if it, we're, we're, if it works out the way I hope it will, our sweet apple pie will take out our maple syrup and that will make uh, people much happier. Yeah, you know, I feel bad for people. There are people that live in parts of the world where they can't get these. And I, I don't know how to tell them to flavor vinegars because when I've tried, 
like you say, when you're doing it just for an individual, you have really powerful machines that really can mix the ingredients. Having the right equipment makes all the difference in the world for, for everything. Uh, you know, for, at, at our facility, um, our one big machine that we used to be able to pour cases with is uh, broken and we don't know how to fix it because the company that made it has gone out of business. So, um, but primarily we pour everything with funnels and pitchers. Everything's done by hand. So that just takes a lot longer to do, but because we make things in four and a half gallons uh, at a time, we're doing things in small batches and we don't want to have our inventories really high. We want to keep making fresh ingredients, fresh batches every week. So we're making, um, you know, uh, probably five or six different flavors every day and making all of our little tiny bottles and all the different sizes, all pouring right out of a pitcher into them, capping and labeling by hand. So this is as low tech as it gets. Jill saying make it maple cinnamon, but some of us don't want maple syrup. What about date cinnamon? No, that's pretty, I could use date syrup or just the actual- Dates. Cinnamon just actual dates out there and then put them in the in the food processor turn into mash and a little bit of cinnamon we'll try it that would be we'll delicious we could use that That's instead great. of maple syrup well this is great let's see Lori says are the fruits tricky for infusing in the balsamics do the fruity additions reduce the shelf life I, i'm sorry chef i didn't hear that again are the fruits tricky for infusing in the balsamics do the fruity additions reduce the shelf life Okay, so now fruits are very tricky. Yes, that is exactly right. And we used to use a frozen raspberry puree, single strength seedless raspberry puree from Oregon. And we used it for several years, but the biggest problem is it has to be frozen. And all these companies, they'll sell it to me at 1500 pounds at a time was the least amount that I could buy. And obviously, uh, where are you going to put 1,500 pounds of frozen raspberry puree? We just didn't have to. We, bar, we were renting a, a freezer at our local dairy, and when they, uh, re, when they needed that space and moved us out, we discontinued our, uh, our raspberry product from our old company. And uh, so unfortunately, all of our fruit flavors are uh, flavorings, um, and we can't use really any fresh fruit because it's just not in season, and you'd have to buy it in such ridiculous bulk that it doesn't make sense for us to do that. Okay, and let's see, there was another question from Diane. Thomas, do you use somewhat aged balsamics or reduce them there in Ukiah? Now, our balsamics are not reduced. They are uh, made in Modena, Italy. You take the the grape juice and boil it down, put it into the barrels. You've got to get, the grape juice is going to ferment and turn into alcohol like wine, of course. You add mother to that to eat up all the alcohol. And once all the mother has uh, eaten all the alcohol, you take that out, put it into the next barrel. Now the vinegars age probably four or five years, which in, for balsamic vinegar is not really all that old. But what they do is they take a uh, great fresh grape juice and they boil it way down and that's called grape must. And the grape must is added to the four to five year old balsamic vinegar and that thickens and sweetens it beautifully so that you don't have to wait 15 to 20 years. Uh, a bottle of really good high quality balsamic from Odina a little five ounce bottle just like this would easily run 75 to $100, which is you know just crazy expensive, but it needs to be that expensive if it's been aging for 15 to 20 years. So what they've done is they found a way to make it thick, rich, and sweet without adding any processed sugar. And that's what we purchased straight from Modena, Italy is the balsamic that has had the great must added. And it depends on the high quality and the high quantity of grape must. Grape must can be boiled down to only 10 or 15% reduced. That's not very thick, rich, and sweet. But if you boil it down by 60 or 70%, now that's a high quality grape must. 
And that's what's been added to the balsamic in Modena for our products. Wow. Janet says, I bought a bunch of these vinegars recently. So good. I did buy the pumpkin spice, but haven't tried it. They're all so good. And we have somebody from another country that actually tried that. Oh, I'm a little muffled. Oh, sorry, I'm wearing headphones. I'll maybe talk louder. Oh, Priscilla says from Edmonton, Canada, I ordered the 18 mini bottle sampler and love them. Still working on them and figuring out what are the best to order the larger ones. Great tasting. Thanks. I say, if you ask me, I would say number one, seven herb Italian, number two, curry, number three, teriyaki, number four, sweet heat, number five, uh, smoked hickory smoke. That, those are Chef AJ's top five. And by the way, Thomas is one of the generous vendors that are giving the over $1,700 worth of prizes in the contest that we announced last Wednesday. If you want the details, go to my website, chefajwebsite.com. Uh, the contest is, it goes to midnight on November 11th. That's going to be great. We're looking forward to sending out whoever the big prize winner is. Good for you. Congratulations. We'll yeah, be I happy mean, to send it out to your box. They're going to win a nutrient milk, which costs $569. And I just started playing with it. Oh my God, it makes the best plant milks and the best nut butter so easy and no pulp, no waste what, whatsoever. How exciting. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. Good for yeah. you guys. Yeah. So, well, this so, is great. Our next month's uh, flavor again is chocolate orange. And so please send us any recipes at uh, recipes at californiabalsamic.com with the chocolate. If we use your recipe, we will send you two eight ounce bottles of balsamic of your choice. So uh, there's a nice little prize given away for anybody's recipe that we use on the air. And we'll also put other recipes that we don't use on the air on our website. Nice. Well, thank you. So let's see, when is the next Tuesday? It's usually one month we were off, but you're usually the first Tuesday of the month. So that would be, wow, December 1st. Holy moly. You got right. some time. You got almost, a, you guys got almost a month to get those recipes in and then you win two Good. free bottles. How cool is that? And chocolate orange should be an easy one to make recipes with. Patty says, love these balsamics. They were a life changer when I went whole food plant based, no oil. Thank you. Don't thank you. Thank me. I think I'm the one that I am the one that brought Thomas Allen to the world, including True North. I have to say, Chef discovered us. Uh, we were trying to think of the exact day uh, that you had called me and said, would you send me some samples? And I'm thinking to myself, absolutely not. I am not working with restaurants. And thank goodness you said, oh, I'm not a chef anymore. I'm just uh, doing plant based. And I said, oh, Tell me more. And you did. And yeah, you know, I can, I can, I can probably look it up exactly because it would have been that, that, ter that uh, pineapple unfried rice video I did with the, right, the, with the teriyaki. Yeah, it was the teriyaki, which was the first flavor I tried. And guys, don't forget to register for the, the show on Sunday night because they do cap it on Zoom. If you want to get tickets, they're only $7, but it's not $7 per person, it's $7 per computer. So you can have the whole neighborhood watch. Stop Thomas <laughs> Allen do his debut of stand up comedy, also performing uh, is, is me. Uh, that's did I say that grammatically correct? And my husband Charles, and actually a few more plant based people that you might recognize the name from from our Zoomudity here. So please uh, come to their come to our cabaret, my friend, because life is a cabaret. I can't believe you talked me into doing this, Chef. I have been scared to death ever since that, but once it's over. I will have accomplished something I never dreamed I would ever do. And so thank you for kicking me in the butt and no, giving me some encouragement. You know, it's good to do things like this once in a while. Otherwise, you just stagnate in life, you know, doing I so agree. Really, you got to challenge yourself or you never grow. And I know it is scary and uh, it's still scary for us. But, you know, like you say, when it over, it's like it's like having your he head caught in a vice. When they unscrew it, you feel really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll be great because people like you, you know. You is good, you is kind, you is important, as they said in the movie, The Help. All right. Well, yeah. thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when we have a very inspiring story from Pills to Plant with Adam Sood. And thanks again, Thomas and Ethel and California Balsamic for making my favorite vinegar. Thank you.